Welcome to the Zen Crypto Show, where we explain cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology in simple terms, so you can feel comfortable interacting with crypto and investing in these exciting new digital assets. I'm your host, Sebastian Couture. There's a popular mantra in crypto that says, not your keys, not your crypto. It's pretty powerful. It empowers people to take control of their money in ways that the traditional financial system simply doesn't allow. But personal private key management is not easy. And many wallets are now turning to more modern hybrid key management solutions for users. One solution which is gaining traction is called multi-party computation. In this episode, we break down MPC in three parts. First, we look at the status quo of private key management and crypto custody. Second, we describe multi-party computations and how they work. And finally, we talk about the user experience of using an MPC-based wallet. Let's get started. Managing one's private keys is not a task to be taken lightly. Protecting the secret that secures one's crypto wallet is a task that is as complex now as it was 10 years ago. Now, mind you, we've come a long way in terms of storing those secrets and using them on a day-to-day -day basis. For instance, hardware wallets make using crypto in a secure way much, much simpler. But the issue remains, your keys, your problem. The big question is, where does one store their seed phrase? That 12 or 24 word phrase that represents your crypto wallet. Do you store it in a bank vault? Do you store it in an encrypted digital vault? Should you store it in multiple places or fragment this phrase in different pieces and store those pieces in different places? What happens if you die? These are questions that people in crypto have been pondering and still ponder to this day. It's been estimated that $100 billion in Bitcoin alone has been lost forever due to bad private key management. And countless other funds when you add Ethereum and all these other cryptos and NFTs that have been lost or stolen. So what's the alternative? Well, for years, there's been a somewhat false misconception that there were one of two ways to store crypto. The first is the righteous way of self-custody. This is what I described earlier. You and only you have 100% responsibility and access over your private keys. It's the purest's position. This is the not your keys, not your crypto bumper sticker mindset. And it's considered the holy grail of crypto custody. But it comes with risks. It comes with the risk of not doing it right. It comes with the risk of losing access to your seed. The other is to forego crypto custody completely and delegate custody of assets to an exchange like Coinbase, Gemini, FTX, or one of the many others out there. Here, the risk of losing your crypto is greatly reduced because these companies spend billions of dollars in security to make sure that their customers' funds are safe. But what you give up is your freedom and the ultimate control of your funds. Exchanges do get hacked. Founders have lost or stolen funds, or ran away with people's money. Now, this is, of course, far less likely to happen these days, especially with big regulated exchanges like the ones I mentioned earlier. But it still happens. And, of course, there's always the risk that these companies decide, for whatever reason, that you can't use your account anymore, or that your access should be blocked. And what's more is that if you store your crypto on an exchange... It's nearly impossible to interact with Web3 and DeFi services because you don't have a wallet with which you can connect to these services. This is a dichotomy which has been presented for years. And for a long time, these were the two viable options. Well, now there's a better way. It's a hybrid solution which greatly reduces the risk of lost or stolen keys while leaving users in full control of their assets. It's called multi-party computation.
Multi-party computation, or MPC, is a type of cryptography which, as the name states, involves multiple parties. With MPC, wallet companies and even institutions are designing asset management systems that allow users to safely have access to their assets, recover access to their assets when their devices are lost or stolen, while also increasing the security of self-custody by removing the single point of failure which has been responsible for the loss of billions in crypto, the seed phrase. At a basic level, MPC allows two or more parties to input information into a system and unlock an outcome. And this is done without any party being able to see the input of the others. So how does this work? Well, as always, with cryptography, it involves math. But let me break it down with a simple example. Let's say there are three of us, and we all have different amounts of money in our pockets. There's you, there's your friend, and me. We're all sitting around in a room. You have 12 bucks in your pocket. Your friend has seven, and I have 11. We'd like to find out how much money we have collectively, but without revealing to each other how much money we have individually. To achieve this, we would each perform a mathematical operation in private. And this operation uses the amount of money we have in our pocket as a parameter. Once each of us has performed this operation, we can provide the result to the group and then use these three results to arrive at the sum of the money we have in our pockets, $30. And we do this without revealing to each other how much money we have individually. At a basic level, this is what multi-computations allow us to achieve. They allow different parties to come to a result of a complex math equation without revealing anything about their secrets. And once we've done this, in a practical sense, we can use the result of this computation to sign a blockchain transaction which, for example, sends Bitcoin or Ether. MPC wallets are able to offer a much better user experience than most crypto wallets, especially for first-time users who are not familiar with the concepts of seed phrases and private keys. Because the wallet only stores one piece of this multi-party secret, which is necessary to unlock funds and make transactions, it's possible to store encrypted copies of this secret on your device or on cloud providers like Google Drive or iCloud while greatly reducing the risk of your funds being compromised. And recovering a wallet when a phone has been lost or stolen is easy and is a process that is far more similar to that of a password recovery, which is familiar to most people. The biggest advantage of using an MPC wallet is that there simply isn't a seed phrase. Even if someone was to hack your wallet, there simply isn't anything that they can take that would allow them to steal your funds. Now, to be clear, there are some trade-offs of using MPC wallets. The most obvious is that there is another party, typically a wallet company, that needs to co-sign each transaction. They need to have their servers running and be part of every transaction you make because they are the other party in this multi-party computation. But here's the thing. There's no way for a wallet provider to discriminate transactions. That is, to pick out customers that they would like to censor. Because they don't know the content of a transaction they are signing. So this means that if they'd like to censor one person, they'd have to censor all of the customers. There are some benefits to using MPC over some other multi-signature schemes that exist in crypto. I'm talking here about multi-sig wallets in Bitcoin, or smart contract wallets, which are quite popular in Ethereum. And the benefit is that MPC is blockchain agnostic. It doesn't care what sort of blockchain it interacts with. And there are no on-chain fees associated to using MPC wallets, which can be the case for smart contract and multi-sig wallets. Wallets which leverage multi-party computation are the middle ground 
between giving up full custody of your crypto to a third party and having to worry about seed phrase storage. When properly designed, they offer a safe way to people to store and use their crypto and where transactions are very difficult to censor. Now, you may have caught on by now that Zengo is an MPC-based wallet. And since it was introduced, MPC has gained massive adoption in crypto. And companies like Coinbase and Fireblocks are now implementing MPC for institutions and big organizations that want to secure crypto. Now, I'm quite confident that MPC will continue to gain traction and become one of the dominant technologies providing the backbone for crypto security for the next 100 million crypto users. If you haven't already, head over to the Apple App Store or Google Play Store, download Zengo, and get to experience the simplicity and security of an MPC-based wallet for yourself. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Zen Crypto Show, which is produced by Zengo, where you can buy, sell, trade, and earn cryptocurrencies with mind-bending simplicity and safety. If you enjoyed this episode, head over to Apple Podcasts and let us know what you learned by leaving a review. And if you'd like to suggest a topic for future episodes, email podcast at zengo.com. Until next time, stay zen.